call the jail study committee meeting to order. Is there anyone that would like to address the committee? We're talking 23, 43 separate Springs Road. And I have a question. Has the state ever signed the jail inmate contract that county commission voted for many months ago? I think we're here to discuss what we're going to move forward with on the jail. And I don't have an answer for you for that. Do you think you get me? Most likely. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else?
so we need to be able to, to use the space we have for, for that, that purpose. Um, many of you have heard over the last, uh, well, ever since uh, the 1st of July, how our jail population has, has skyrocketed. <coughs> um, here's just an update on our average daily population is through the first six, <coughs> through the first six months of this year, um, the average daily population was 422. And we had a high last week of around 474. And then in males, it was 303 um, for the average of that first six months. Females, 119. And then the high, I think, one day last week was 153. And our state inmate population ranged from 60 to, to 65. Um, just and, and try to put together some kind of projections on, on what we can anticipate. Um, I used some, some information that was in the Mosley report, and I went back and made, and made sure, well, did my own calculations to see how accurate it was, and, and, and I came uh, close to, on the average ADP, we, we came within two, I think. Um, but in 2010, you can see our population was 6, 62,544 projected for the 2020 census at 64,277. That's an increase of 2.8%. So I just used 2.8% from 20 to 2030 and from 2030 to 2040 to end up with about 68,000 people just based on, on history. And then the, the ADP increase is based on the most and the 422 is from the first six months of this year. So what does, what uh, I guess, what does that mean? All right, in, in the projection needing the 519 beds that we'll need in, in 2040, uh, our population, the 422 uh, that we average the first six months, 72% men and 28% women. So I based these next couple of slides on a 70% male population and a 30% female population. And based on information supplied by Jim Hart of CTAS, just the industry standards and, and jail bed classifications, um, maximum, cust maximum custody would be about 10% of your sales. Special needs, which would be those who are on suicide watch or those with special medical conditions would be around 5%, and you have your medium custody at 50%, and then your minimum custody, minimum security, around 35%. All right, so with the uh, 519 beds, our 70% of a male would be 363, 30% female would be 156, and if you take those percentages, uh, about maximum custody, special needs, uh, medium and minimum custody. Uh, these are the numbers that it comes out of. Excuse me, maximum right. custody on the females. What do we have now? Anything? We don't have any way to classify them now. Do we know? No. They're all in one room. Not all of them, but we got four slash sale means is two man sales and then you have the dormitory for the minimum security. So new construction uh, based on on the information that that, that I gathered and, and 
because we have a need for about 600 to 600, I'm sorry, 400 to 460 uh, new sales, new in our new building. Um, and the core, and the core, we've had conversations about core through the last couple of years. The core is booking, it's medical, it's the kitchen, it's property storage, it's jail administration and laundry. Not so much jail administration, but the laundry. Of the core service areas for the jail population. So, uh, so in a new building, you're talking about in, in our situation, and I'll show you some options here in a minute. About 400 to 425 in a new building, and about 20 to 35 in a, a workhouse addition. Those would be a couple of options if you wanted to go that direction. Courtrooms, uh, a couple of new courtrooms, uh, one with the jury box and one without, and uh, and then one small multi-purpose room, which could be used for grand jury, jury call, be used as a conference room, something like the West Wing uh, that we use, um, and, and if, if designed correctly, the the multi-purpose room could be part of a a larger, let's say you needed a larger jury trial area. You could maybe have some accordion walls or something like that and open that space up and give more space. For this it. is additional, two courtrooms additional to the five we have now? Addition to what we have now, yes. Um, the offices in the new building would be the circuit court clerk's office to serve uh, criminal will serve, serve the circuit judges in the circuit courts and then also uh, Sessions Division 1, which is the criminal. And judges' chambers, the jury room, and then some client meetings rooms, which we don't have now. As far as existing space, we have about 92 beds in the annex that uh, uh, we would we would need to renovate on the first and second floors and then uh, update the workhouse, the existing workhouse, where it could be used for, for up to 20 to 35 beds, from 20 to 35 beds. And the courtrooms, in, in, now my thoughts, is that we convert the, where Judge Collins is now, convert that to Division II Juvenile, so that'd be for Judge Schneider. And then use the criminal and circuit courtroom in the back uh, for juvenile court waiting area. Right now, if you come to on juvenile court day, Judge Snyder uses this bench in this room. And when they when they sound the docket at the very first of juvenile court, this room is packed. It's full, standing room only. Okay. So what happens is when um, after they sound the docket, they move everybody down the hall to the small courtroom down there, and under the juvenile court rules. Judge Schneider, uh, here's one case at a time. With no witnesses, is that correct? Or no spectators? Right. right, and then they call each each case in. So um, this idea would be Judge Collins' courtroom would be juvenile and the uh, Division II uh, sessions. The waiting area would be back in, in the what's now the uh, current criminal courtroom in part of that space, not all of that space, but part of that space. And it connects. Yeah, kind of it weaves. Well, you can make it connect. Yeah, you can make it connect. So that's that's that concept. Then you keep Chancery Court here. So Clerk and Master's office stays in this building and Chancery Court, uh, Chancellor Jenkins stays here. Also in the existing space, um, in the 1979, in the original jail space in the slams area, let's say, um, this space would be used for mostly the sheriff's department, for storage, um, for uh, the armory, move the armory from upstairs to downstairs to give them more room upstairs in that finished space. Um, armories where they keep their weapons and their ammunition. Um, have interrogation rooms for the detective division, uh, have those downstairs, um, could turn the kitchen, not the kitchen, the uh, medical room into a conference room, a briefing room, 
Um, and then you'd have in the slams area, that's where you could move evidence storage, which is upstairs in the attic, is where the evidence storage is, and the uh, seized property storage, which is now in containers out in the yard, and move that into that area. We could use uh, the grand jury room if you're going down the hallway in the Justice Center upstairs, and the room in the back on the right is used for the grand jury and used for briefing for the sheriff's department. And that could, uh, the juvenile court services in dire need of space. And they could use that, and uh, we'd have to knock out a, make a door to connect the two. And then uh, there's just right across the hall is Don Baird's office and community work programs. And just right, the last office on your left is the circuit court clerk's criminal clerk, and that would be converted for community service space. So that's, you know, I, I've heard some concerns about walking away from a building and not using the building we have, and these are just my thoughts on how we could use, use the building. And, and I realize not everybody will agree on it, but that's just my thoughts. Using about 90% of that building that way is using about 90% of that existing building that way. Yes. Yes. There may be just a little bit of of, of space downstairs. Yeah. That's it. Uh, Mayor, what do yes. you have to do with the uh, current annex uh, to meet state standards? I'm, I'm getting there. You're going to get there. I'm getting there. Okay. On and the next couple of slides are, are different options for the different numbers of beds and how we would use the different buildings, the existing buildings and existing space for jail space. Um, the first would be a total of 561 beds. Uh, 425 of it would be new in the new building. Uh, 92 is existing. That's in the annex on the first and second floors. Uh, first floor, 32 beds, 8 me medium security, 24 dormitory. Um, and then the second floor would be 60. It's six, six, 68 now for women, is that right? The, based on conversations I've had with, with the jail inspectors, is the second floor is not built out of corrections grade materials. It's the walls are made out of, they're, they're studded walls made out of concrete uh, board. And they don't meet uh, security grade standards and that whole floor would need to be gutted. And uh, the ceiling would have to be replaced. Um, so it would be some major renovation uh, for the second floor to use it for housing. Now we could use it for other things, but to use it for housing, we would have to renovate it. Um, I had a structural, structural engineer come in and look at the support system for the second floor to see if it could handle concrete block walls. Because that, that's the construction grade material that is the most um, uh, cost efficient. And um, we, would have to, we would have to make some improvements to the support system for, that, let's say to replace, there's a wall that runs the length of the building north to south to replace that wall with concrete blocks uh, we would have to add to the support system underneath that second floor. So, so we did we did that investigation with, with a, a structural engineer. Um, all right, and, and in this option, option one, so you have those 92 beds um, of existing space and then uh, I'm, I'm a firm believer that we can't keep doing what we're doing. Uh, as far as just just uh, putting people in jail and, and, and expecting outcomes to be better. And so uh, <coughs> this idea would we would convert the existing workhouse to a reentry diversion program work program. Um, that building, uh, the, the last visit we had with the jail inspector, we went through through that building and looked at it and to see what we would need to do to that building uh, to get it to uh, where we could house. Uh, uh, now this is for uh, folks in custody. We would have to sprinkle the building, it's not sprinkled. We'd have to replace the ceiling. We would have to uh, put drains in the floors, replace the plumbing fixtures. Um, 
those, 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 but the big thing is the sprinkling and the seal uh, for that space. Also, the door is not a security grade door. Um, it's it has an alarm on it, but we can't lock it because it's the second fire exit. So um, that that whole space, if it's used for confinement, need to be need to be reworked. But if we use it for reentry, uh, which and they're not, you know, they're free to come and go to a degree. They know if they go, they're going to end up in jail. But uh, then we we can leave that door and not have to worry about replacing that door. Um, so that would be say 20 on the male side. We're also working on something this week. Um, I mean, we could we could use we could use it for reentry, kind of like what we're doing with the women at with Helen Ross McMahon. Uh, but but we could also use it for a diversion program, uh, similar to what Knox County is doing. You know, I'm talking over not tomorrow. I'm talking over a period of time that we transition into this. Um, and uh, where the, the lower level public intoxication type charges, those type charges that the DA and the judge would, would agree on could be instead of taking them to jail and taking them through the criminal justice system then divert them into a program where they uh, can stay for up to 72 hours. And that's kind of what Knox County has gone through. Um, and then also, we've started this week um, working with the jail staff, we identified that in trying to figure out why the jail spike, you know, why the 474 people. And one group that we identified was folks spending time for non-payment of child support. So we're working on uh, and made some progress this week to create a, a child support work program where uh, those who are in jail for child support uh, or non-payment of child support if they can agree to participate in the work program, and uh, <coughs> uh, we've got some some employment agencies that will place them in, in jobs, uh, with what they earn will go toward payment of child support, then they can get out of jail instead of some of them stayed up to a couple of months and get out in a couple of weeks. So that will save us some some jail space there. And then the uh, Helen Ross McNabb female reentry program. Right now, in, in year one, uh, we're using eight beds. Uh, they have as many as 24 beds that we could use for reentry for females. And um, so far, the program has gone has gone well. We've had two classes of eight um, of the of the 16 who started the program. 12 have completed. Uh, and one, one of the 12 has reoffended in, in seven months. So, um, yeah, so then, that, that 24, when you're saying total beds, wouldn't be in that, let's just say, a compound right there. It would be. Not in, not in, I'll show, I'll show you the car. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll show you the it's, it's, it's in that side of the building. And um, let's see. So, there, so we could expand it from 8 to 24, again, over time. So, Bill, what I hear you say, if I'm correct, sure. you're decapitating basically the top of that building to rebuild it, correct? Pretty you much? Keep the shell. Keep the shell. And you put in new walls. And they said it will support new brick walls. With some upgrades of the supporting system. The annex. The annex. Yes, and yes. yes. Any questions on that? On the 561. Okay. The next one. Well, here's the next slide. Is is just kind of the map of the of the campus where you see the the building with the 425 beds, and then though the little pink area. That's on the Helen Rock Man building. No, that's what I'm saying. It would still be, it would we'd still be using their bill. Correct. That would be that correct. correct. Yes, that's correct. correct. And then you have Annex 1, that's the first yep. floor of the Annex. Annex 2, that's the second floor of the Annex. Just to kind of show you where it is. So they're stacked on top of each other would be. And then in this option, you have the workhouse. So that's kind of what the campus. 
would look like in, in general. All right, and the second option would be 596 beds. 460 would be new. That would be 425 in a new, bigger building. And then 35 to, in a, a workhouse addition. And so that would be the 460 new. You'd have 92 existing, which would be the two floors of the annex. And then you'd have 44 reentry beds that we would look, look to use. Um, so the difference in this and option one is the workhouse addition. And then again, if you look at the picture, then right there is the addition of the workhouse right next to it. You have a little uh, a connector, so to speak, an area where that's where your jail staff could be. You could have one control room to supervise both spaces. You could have uh, space in there for pill pass and, and uh, that kind of thing. And, and uh, what? For pill pass for the medical, the medical staff to have the <coughs> medicines. Not what originally got them there. Well, I mean, that is. I'm just using the terminology used there. I, I just didn't know what it meant. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> I thought that's what you said. <laughs> so uh, you got the gun pass right down the hall. So, so that would be that's the difference between option one and option two is the addition to the word. Yes. Now in that in that scenario you would have the workhouse it would house about 35 and then you could use the original workhouse you could use that for reentry. So in the version if you wanted to. Let me ask you a question. Sure. What's in the workhouse today? What the number of the <clears throat> Space that's the two floors of the annex, and then you would you would renovate the workout the existing workhouse to house prisoners not for reentry. And so that would uh, based on space, um, the inspectors say they can certify it for thirty five existing now. Correct. 
and then we would keep the, the re-entry program in Hill and Ralston. Right? So, so that's 611 total beds. That would be that option if you chose to go that direction. So again, uh, just the same, same type campus where you have the addition, you have the workhouse, and it's, it's prepared for the dorm beds, not necessarily re-entry, but for, for dorm. You have dorm here, and then you have the two annexes, and then the secure facility here, and the re-entry here. What's the difference in you got 20 male beds or 35 dorm beds. Our 20 is for if it's a re-entry, it's for if it's for re-entry. Okay, what would be the difference? You would have, um, you would, the way you would develop the space is you would put in a treatment area. You, you would put in a living area. You would put in walls for individual bedrooms. Just for the re-entry part of it. Okay, so if, it's, so if their re-entry is into the prison or to the outside? To the outside. Okay. And work. Yep. Re-entry and work. Uh, yes. Are these, bed, uh, are these rooms or cells set up to handle two beds, single beds on each side of the room, or are they set up where you can put four people in each cell? The ones I've seen, we're not there yet. Yeah, but I mean, they're set up as two. Yeah, that's what I've seen. Up and down. Okay. They're not twin beds. They're both beds. Well, yeah. 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 Oh. That's what I've seen with the jails we've been okay. yes. in. And you, are you guys aware of any, any different setup? Like four door room or anything like that? Well, I mean, if you go back to our existing, when we kind of set up in some places, four foot of room. I think you got to have so many square feet. For a person. Well, I understand that, but that 70 square, it's, it's 35 square feet, five seven. Right. That's no, uh, 17. We'll get two people. Uh, but what I'm saying is when they're uh, in part of the jail, when they're a door, uh, room, bed, 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 in the old part. In the old part. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, that's what I mean. It's kind of set up like that. Yeah, yeah, so four four. Sales and sales and second this sales is set up more for two, right? Here. And the one we went to in, in uh, Transylvania, it was two, wasn't it? But I believe uh, Hawkins County is four. Was that something? Who's been to Hawkins County? Who's been to Hawkins County Jail Chief? Have you been to the Hawkins County Jail? I have not. Okay. I think it's their, their maximum security, or, or their medium security, I think is, because that's where they put the pods in. I believe it's set up two and two. That's right. And the mezzanine, you're talking yeah. about the second floor? Up and down. Yeah. 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 The only thing, it, I, I don't know if four people cause more arm wrestling matches, but you're also having half the doors. I don't know if, that's, if there's any statistics on that, but I would think that four to a room would be a little cheaper than two to a room, just nothing else, because you only have to buy, you know, one door. You know, 25 doors, let's say, 50 for 100 people. And then, for, like, for medium security, uh, the four would probably work, yes. but like the maximum, you know, I know that. Yeah. Uh, and in the workhouse, do we today have anybody that's housed in the workhouse that's not on a work program? In other words, there is minimum security. They're used to their house there because of that. There's a couple of uh, child support only people up there. However, they've not, we've not incorporated the work program for them yet. Well, uh, and they can yes, be what for our Would it be a problem if, uh, you have the work program and minimum security people in the same facility. Would that, would that present any problem as far as getting the people out to go to work? And well, the people that work are minimum security pretty much. Um, I think he's asking where they stay. Yeah. More than anything. In other words, I, if there are minimum security, uh, inmates, I guess I'm asking, could
couldn't be housed in the workhouse. <coughs> so they're not, not going to be on the work program or not going out to work, but could, could they house them or yeah, they could be housed there before they go, you know, after they go to court. Well, if we're looking at, I mean, we might want to think about maxing that out as much as we can. And that's, that's what the third option is. <laughs> So, so here are the options and the number of beds, just as a comparison. Uh, option one, now of those, uh, kind of the Stancil's point, on option one, there's 44 re-entry beds in that. Option two, there's 44. And then option three, there's 24. So just, uh, there's, less, there's less manpower needed for the re-entry program. Um, less supervision needed. So, from an operational standpoint, uh, well, has there been any thought given or any look at <coughs> option one? Uh, what, what's the staff going to look like versus option two versus option three? Uh, we haven't no, we haven't gotten to that. Well, didn't today. Just got the only. <coughs> The only difference is between of, of the 50 beds, every bit of that's in the workhouse area. So it's going to be a very minimal number. Doesn't affect any of the new jail or the existing annex remodel. Is that be correct? You're talking staffing? Yes. But what do I'm saying of our options? We're looking at a 425 bed new facility. Everything else, if you look at, uh, or 460, 425 in the jail. Everything else is existing or remodeling the annex. So the difference in one, two, and three is one building for the annex or for the workhouse, two buildings or three buildings, essentially. Would that be fair? That's where the difference is. And in, so on that, there's not going to be any. I mean, there'd be one or two more, well, that would be all. Un uh, 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 on that right there. Is that is that what you're asking? No, uh, what I'm asking. You know, cost really down the road is being able to look at what does it cost to, to manage the facility. Mm -hmm. In other words, our existing staff, what we got down in the jail. Will that staff be able to operate in either option one, two, or three without additional people? No. That's what I thought. Well, I, I, you know, I've asked one time, how many additional people are we talking about? Well, and we've got in the Mosley report, there's a study, but... Um, I just go back to Jefferson County. When they, when they, you know, when they built their new justice center, it set up on the hill for a long time. Because it couldn't move in. Because it couldn't, Anderson they couldn't County, stop. Anderson County did the same thing. And, 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 and that's, that's something that I think we ought to be very aware of as, as we move it moving along. The reason Anderson County couldn't move in it, and they never did move in it, is because the county commission wouldn't fund it. That's the reason that wasn't, you're talking about. Yes. yes. That wasn't necessarily Jefferson County's issue. Jefferson County's issue, they didn't have the money to staff but for the additional staff. Yeah, that's, that's exactly what they said. Yeah. That they, yeah. Yeah. Anderson County never did use that facility. It shut down. It is not they never used it. It never opened. Yeah. They built two buildings, one of them did. Yep. Yeah. And that was their dormitory, the best well, I remember. Uh, staff it. Very important as we decide what we're going to do. Now, one one of the when, when we get to the design phase, um, that's part of the design phase is that um, uh, Jim Hart will do a staffing analysis for us. So, uh, so when we get to that and, and we know what the floor plan is going to look like, he'll do a staffing study for us. And we know. 
But right there, in that, of, the, of those three options, the difference in the first one and the third one of 50 people in the bed has nothing to do necessarily with the I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, UJ. I'm talking about what we've got now, so versus what we'll have to have under well, any option. I agree. But one thing I'd say there is we, we, we don't necessarily have a choice. The design is going to have more to do with that. With then, because if we we can't say well we're going to build it for 400, and you know if anybody else needs to go to jail, they just go somewhere else. If That's it, not going to work. We've done that a long time. Ago. If it's multi-story, it'll be more staff intensive than if it was one. Having the three sections, having the new building, then the annex, and then the workhouse is going to be more staff intensive. Um, I mean that's just. Depends right. on how you. I, I think you, you go the mezzanine. So. I, I think it would be good if it's possible to, to get the information. If, if the person that's responsible for the staff, if they could present what they think the staff is going to be. It was done by both of them. Got, it's that done. information exists. Now, but on, but on a larger, on a larger facility. Yeah, I mean, we can we, we, that way, back into it at least. You know, before you, before you went off and start building the building, you're going to know what you've got to have from yeah. staff. Yeah, that's, that's part of the next thing. Let me, let me get this clear in my mind. We, we've got uh, roughly 460 inmates today, something like that. Uh, we're take, talking about taking the speaker and putting 30 over here and 30 over there, depending on which one stole the lollipops and which one had a gun. How many people in the jail now, excuse me for directing the radio talk, how many people in the jail now would you consider hardened and you wouldn't want to send over to one of the easy facilities? The, the, out of the 460 people we have right now, if we had other places to put them where so they'd be considered less offended, if you would, how many would you actually take out of the jail population now? All the women would stay in the hard section. Okay. <laughs> well, what I'm trying well, to well, we don't have we don't necessarily have the room to do a classification. That's the reason they can't give you that answer. Well, let me get to my point, and uh, you usually said to help me anyway, but just the one. <laughs> um, Bill, I reckon what I'm saying, are we actually going to try and build enough cells in one building? Yes. To accommodate the people that we don't want scattered in the little safe houses and whatnot? That's not an issue. Okay. I, I mean, to be able to tell you, we, there again, that's what I was trying to say. That is, if you want to look at that and say, let's consider it as a jail, and then uh, uh, look, minimum security. Yeah. That provides for about 515, <coughs> let's call what would be in the jail. The rest of it would be in, in the Helen Ross McNabb now. Okay. Plus the uh, where the workhouse is now. If, if you look at the, okay, here's the key. These two numbers, 425 and 92, whatever that comes out, to, 415, I believe, 417, 517. The rest of it comes from the <coughs> would be in the safe. <coughs> It still looks like we're building the buildings don't fill up the first day we open. Well, that's why we're, that's why just like that child support work program, we're trying to we're trying to be creative to try to manage the jail population so they're not just sitting there. I mean, part of the part of the re, part of the child support folks who are there just for child support have been there for what, 60 days? They don't need to be there. So, I mean, got in there so that's what we're trying to do. Twenty to twenty-five at any given time. So, so those are the three. Um, now, 
from the Citizens Advisory Committee, um, there some of the concerns they've had, and, and, and we've tried to address them. One of them, like in the last meeting we had, there was sewer capacity was an issue that was brought up. I talked to MUS, not a problem. All the, the sewer, the water, all the infrastructure, it's there. So, and it's it's of the capacity that that we're okay. Um, parking, we'll address that here in just a minute. Um, <coughs> elevator safety. Um, there, there's policies and procedures that we can implement to be sure that the staff is, is safe in, in transporting prisoners on and off elevators. Uh, mental health and substance abuse treatment, we'll try to, we'll try to address that in the reentry program. So that, some of the concerns that, that uh, the Citizen Advisory Group brought up, we're, we're addressing uh, in this. Uh, as far as parking goes, uh, we will we'll lose some parking with the new building. And what, what I want us to think about is buying the hill property across the street. And uh, that's, uh, this. I, th I think it's two acres, maybe an acre and a half, 180, one, one, one eight. One eight. And so here's, here's the house, and then here's this empty lot. The hills wouldn't sell them separate. So they, we would have to buy together. And then um, here on, is the electrical point. Right. You can see a little better now. Okay. So there's the hail house. Here's the courthouse right here. Here's the existing parking. Right here's the maintenance building. Um, and then the justice center's over here. So this is just, you look out the window and it's right there. And um, so what the concept would be would be to, to purchase the property, develop additional parking. That's about 75 spaces right there in that, in that rough design right there. We have about 100 in the existing parking lot here. And so what the, where the public parking lot would be for the Justice Center would be here. And then the staff, courthouse staff would park here. Uh, the, uh, what we would use is, is we would use the health house to move two or three offices over there. We can move um, Ag Extension over there, uh, take, move the clerk's office, and then and while the construction is going on, move the clerk's office to where Ag Extension is, and then go to one entrance to the courthouse right there. And then uh, we can move the veteran service officer over there. We can move the EMA over there. Uh, those are just some options that we could do. The, we would tear down, along with the four houses that we would tear down where the new building's going, we would take down the, uh, the maintenance building here. Uh, it, I don't know how old the building is, but it's been there a long time. And uh, it's used a lot for storage now, uh, and it is the headquarters of our maintenance staff. Something that Terry Myers and I talked about today and I really hadn't thought about is here's the, the, the garage right there to the Hale House. We could maybe just add a little bit right here and, and maintenance could read. It actually has an upstairs. Are you okay? The little hat in the garage. Does. So that could be that could be where we relocate maintenance. Plus, we would be using that big quarter back there. Back up top left. Yes, right here. We wouldn't be putting parking into that until it was necessary. Right. So that would be that would this this purchase and this development would give us the parking we need, would satisfy the parking. Now folks would have to walk a little bit. You know. And so um, and then would give us some office space we need, some storage space we need, and um, also, we could relocate maintenance there. We could go to one entrance to this complex, so and improve the, the safety here. I have a yes. Once you move all the courtrooms out of here, yes. in other words, once one person can play over it, just and everybody moved over back. This one stays like it is. Uh, well, I understand that, uh, that, but what I'm saying, you're going to create a lot of parking. I mean, if juvenile court was gone, 
you get out plenty of parking. I mean, I, but as I say, all the courtrooms are, are Tracy's people are all, all gone. And uh, it looks to me like you would have plenty of parking if you, I mean, if, if that's something we needed, but I've always said this, if we're going to buy a property, or use for this for, for the courthouse. I think to make this plot complete, I think we ought to look at what's up down here on the front yard. I mean, that's my thought. Which is $400,000 more what we're spending here. That makes sense. He, he's asking a lot of money for the property. They're asking $1.5 million next door. Yeah. Well, that's what they're asking. Yeah. Well, that's what they're asking. When he found out that we were interested in the price went up one hundred fifty thousand, no, I'm just telling you, he gave two and a quarter for it and said he gave too much. He'd take the two and a quarter back. We had the conversation with him when he got started that we we're interested in it. Now it's three seventy five. I don't know what he'd take for it. I don't have any idea. But what you're going to end up there with is six parking places in a building. There's no parking there. You look at it and see, and he's. And, and, you know, we're, we shouldn't have, in my mind, we can get this for twice. It costs us uh, two times what that costs. Not much thinking there. Yeah. And that, we grow that. We're not doing the whole, we're not we're taking We're going to have a hard time getting people to park on the top over here. If they got this, so just. Especially on a rainy or cold I mean, day. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there again, yeah, let's put them down here where they got Well, that's the let, let, me see, let me ask you a question, Bill. You got. 425 bed in the main facility. Then you up here got Annex 1, then you got Annex 2, then you got the uh, uh, workhouse up here, workhouse number 2, and then you got, you got it's going to be a logistical nightmare. That's exactly what we got now. But that's why I said, that's why I said a long time ago, okay, so they're paying 650 or whatever it is they want for this thing right here. Go buy a piece of property and build us a good jail, a nice jail. Something's going to last us for 40 years because this will not last us. 30 or 40 years. No jail lasts that long. Well, we got a lot there? better opportunity was, out there than we do right over here. I'm sorry? When we, huh? This new one over here opened. 77. 78, what year is it? It's like that 41 years? It's yeah. gone. Yeah. That's why I say it's, you're, you're exactly right. It's gone. Well, we're building a new jail. Where do you want to build this one? At the Food City? I don't care. Food City? We can go out here and find this piece of property? We can do it a whole lot cheaper than what we're talking about here. Look at all the property we're buying. And you made the statement, you made the statement, we already own that property. We don't have to find more property a long time ago. Well, look here. Now we're $650,000 here. Or is that right? $650,000, is that correct? No, it's three seventy five dollars for, for both of them. For everything. Right. For everything. Right. Okay, whatever it is. Okay, then we're buying all these properties down here. We're probably here. And we're making it more harder for people to get to the courthouse or to the jail over there and we stuff? We made all those properties there. When you go out, I'll tell you a prime example, and you've heard this. Then you pay a whole lot, you need to hire a whole lot more people to run this thing because look at all the different entities you've got over there. What do you there. think? You, so you think that you could leave this building, you could leave right over there and go somewhere and build a new facility for less than what we're talking about? Uh, yes. What yes. are we talking about? What would you be willing to bet on that? Well, you know, architect stood right here and told me. Oh, he did. Ready to board. He didn't? He did. He what said it costs more, cost less to build this way than that way. I heard what he, he said. He, okay, what he said that He said it would cost us a whole lot less if we build on a single level. I just said that. On a single level, then yeah. us going over here building straight up, and he come up with different issues. If something happened on the top floor, you got to get police officers up there. How are you going to get them up there? I don't mean no harm in any police officer, but it's, it's a lot of the steps you got to walk up. By the time you get up there, you're going to be wore out. You can't sit there and wait on an elevator. A floor? We're on two floors now. I understand that. That's what I'm saying. Tell me one is not on two floors around here. I'm, I'm serious. What jail around here is not on two floors? Hawkins County. Mm -hmm. No, it's on two floors. I've Hawkins County is on two floors. Uh, they they got their pods. The they same got their thing, it's on two no, floors. No, no, no. You, don't, you think they fly up those steps? Do you, do, you, do you think? I've seen them walk up the steps and been inside it. 
Not as much as the, that's for the jail the inmates. Inmates work down those steps. What is the footprint of the plan? Oh, you ever, you ever heard the architect say the footprint yeah, of the plan? Uh, uh, motion to adjourn. <laughs> well, you just got to lay down here. Oh, I'm going to say this thing thirty. Just get a leg I know I'm lazy. I'll say you can see. Well, what is the footprint? I think it's it's less than thirty-five thousand. Pardon me? Thirty-five thousand is the footprint. Over there. Yeah, I remember something. Don't know no, the new what new part. Yeah, I remember something like that. Somewhere. Thirty-five thirty-four. Yeah. Some more there. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. We figured about 30 there. Then there's another couple of lots. We own a quarter lot over here that the EMS uses that we could park. Uh, what is the size of this return is off? So we talked about No, I'm here. talking about this corner right here. If you looked at the window, you see it. Oh, okay. Where the old jail used to be. Yeah, yeah, where the old jail was. No, how many how many uh, parking spots are we going to lose? Do you figure it out? Or? No, I think about that. We have to decide. <laughs> well, I mean, how are we going to lose any? Let me point out something here on this, on this drawing that um, shows off on option three is what I'm looking at. That, that building that they're looking at, the 425, it could actually be put closer back to the existing building. Is that not right? Sure. Sure, that's and not the create. And that's some, every option. You could that's what I'm saying. Yeah, one, two, and you three. You could create that some more parking exactly in front the same of the building thing. there. But I think there's about 70 spots around the building. And I thought the most of that would be for Teresa's staff, because they'll be there, and, and the judges. We're, we're not really looking at we're not really looking at a plan a, a diagram of what's actually going to be proposed because we've not gone into the design phase at all at this point. No. I'm talking to okay. people. Okay. How many cars? How many cars do you have over here on the window hunt? Do you remember on those days that they did that? Do you have any idea? When we have the jury? Yeah. We have eight panels times twelve. So what's that? Ninety-six. Ninety-six. So you count on a hundred more cars. Yeah, and that would be separate because they wouldn't rise with each other. I'd like to ask the mayor if he would be happy to with his presentation. And let's get through this, and then we'll we'll have some more discussion. Well, just on the on the Hill property, here's here's the breakdown of the cost. The purchase price is three eighty five, and then uh, about fifty thousand dollars for renovation. You have to make it ADA handicapped accessible, a handicapped bathroom, paint and floor cover, covering, uh, parking lot uh, for seventy five spaces right around two fifteen. So a total of about six fifty. What, is what we would anticipate. So, what um, I guess what I want you guys to think about, I'm not asking for a decision today, but first is are there any of these options that you would not want to do? And we just eliminate that off the top. I think the third option makes more sense than the others. That's the least amount of money per, per bed. And yes. then, Authorize, authorize the purchase of the hail property. So we can go ahead and go with that. Authorize the demolition of the houses, and uh, and then the surveys that we're going to need, uh, so that we can go ahead and get that done while we're deciding on 
uh, the, the design because we're going to have to have it anyway. We can go ahead and get it done. So those those are the action steps. Well, I got one more question. Sure. Maybe two. How many how, do we have? The amount of people who are arrested by the city versus the county? They all live in the county. Huh? They all live in the county. I understand, but how many city uh, <laughs> versus the county? 70, 30. Uh, at least. Yeah, what, at least. Kind of, what kind of assistance do we get from the city? We don't get any because we don't have to. They don't have to do anything. They are the county by state statute is required to maintain the jail. Not a city jail in the state of Tennessee. Unless it is a holding facility to it. Like Gatlinburg has a city jail. It holds 20 people, I believe. There's a kid from Marstown runs it. Whatever his name is. I, I, I'm an I can't remember his name. But they don't, we are required. The best job in the state of Tennessee is Sheriff Davidson County. You don't do anything. They can offer. <laughs> well, their theory is this: if you go, if, if, I mean, seriously, if you go, if you look, they pay a tax rate of how much? One. No, ninety-nine. No, no, no. Yeah. County inside the city. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, let's say it's one seventy-six. Look at the valuation of the county. Look at the valuation of the city. They pay their fair share. Pay more than we do. A lot more. Just because of the industry valuation <coughs> and the housing. Chairman, another question? Uh, no, that's it. I got one real quick, Mayor. Teresa, if I could. You're saying about 100 people for jury selection um, on civil docket day for Jeff Snyder. How many cases are they running per day in the house? I know when I work for court, sometimes it would be 70 and 80, which is that many more parking spots every day. Do you know about how many she's averaging? It's about the same. About 70 days. It's not every day. It's on Tuesday. No, it's every Tuesday. Okay. Are we supposed to build 300 parking places because we need them four days a year? I don't think so, personally. How many is over here when they have to be here? Shouldn't be there. How many is over here at the old jail site? Hundred. Did you say? A hundred. There is none. There is none. I, I counted them. There is none. hundred. There is none. And there's oh, room of, you know, where they've got the uh, uh, confiscated, I'm sorry, what the confiscated is on housing, there's house trailers, or not house trailers, mobile homes, and you know, most of that confiscated there is next to the what's his name? That's ours. We, that can be paid for parking. We just bought one little spot up above it for the duty, the stay. We probably put 25 parking places there. I can't remember how big the restaurant was building was when the old jail was there. I can't remember. Scrap yeah, right They, 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 they made that very simple old jail down back there. Keep them on top. A little bit. Yeah. Just the parking. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. That, you know, that's the presentation. Um, you know, that's. These, it, these topics are what I would like for you to, I mean, is there, is there a, an option or a part, a piece, a piece that you don't think that is just outlandish that uh, you wouldn't consider on anything? The hell you can go ahead and eliminate. The hell part. You don't take it. Yes. Thinking on that, Donnie, was this. The courthouse is kind of cramped as it is now. We're going to gain a little bit of space. How much money are you talking about? Well, all in, the total is 615000 But it, let, me, let me explain what I'm saying. It, that is way cheaper than what it would cost to add to this building, which we could do that post street. Yeah, I say that That's $800,000 less than buying this one up here, which would have to be remodeled. I wouldn't even do that. Well, but I'm just saying, that has to, the reason they're moving because they've got to bring it up to code if they continue to use the basement. It's a cost per him. But they price it just for me at four fifty or five or something crazy. What are you talking about? Uh the low leg the Low leg Low leg The one the one below us, let's say you buy for three hundred thousand. You hadn't bought anything. You bought a I'm literally nothing. 
options. Of all the, of all the options. Renovation costs on that building is about three quarters of a million. And another thing you need to think about the health property. If we don't get it now, we may never get it. Because well, we have and to and and we the plan all along exactly is that it takes, it's, it makes, the courthouse will be here forever. It would have enough room to where we would never have to expand this courthouse because of that. How many courtrooms have you taken out of the courthouse and put them in the new structure? Essentially, why are you making the courthouse bigger? Why is it going to get bigger if you're taking everything out of it? Why do you need more parking for the courthouse when you're taking the courthouse? No, no, no. Look, look at Hold on. Look, look. Let me, let, let me try to explain to you. We're not taking a courtroom out of here. We're taking a court. Court. Yeah. The juvenile <laughs> services and civil service or uh, general, session. general sessions, too. That's the civil session. That's where I sue you because you paid me for my cow or whatever. But. That doesn't give us anything here. That literally doesn't help. Chancery is still going to be in this court. So it takes up the majority of this floor. I got that left. Okay? It's going to... All those people are going to do is instead of parking there and walking here, they're going to park there and walk there. Mm -hmm. I probably the same distance. That gives us... Get some of this parking off the street because that's dangerous. That's... I mean, Right, Tim, Tim's logic and Tim's on the Tim's in the table of contents of the book, and I'm at the I'm at the back of the book. We're that far apart. Tim wants to go buy his property somewhere else. Yeah. I'm happy with building right over here, but I don't think we need new courtrooms and office space. I think we need to build about 250, 300 beds and, and continue to use the building that well, we have because we, you know, I mean, we're we're well, way well, off. At the end of the day, the hell property has nothing to do with the jail. I understand that. It's but, just, you know, it's we expanding have this campus. Problem. We have an overcrowded problem with him. And, that, and that's basically that's it. No, Johnny, we, no, no. I, I disagree with that. We, we've, run out, we've run out of office space. We've run out of storage space. The, the building next door is 18 years old, all right? And it gave us some space for 18 years. We're full. The clerk and master's office, their storage is full, and, and their floor is starting to to buckle a little bit because of it. But what is our question? Why are we here? We're here. Well, we're here. We're, the crisis is in the jail. Okay. But, but, but let, if, we, if we take a 20 to 25 year look at the whole thing, that's what we need to do. That's what we're here for, to look for the future of the county. Well, you guys were talking about this before I got on the commission. That's been almost five years. Yes, sir. And we're no years. further along than we were the no, we are. We are. Well, we haven't made we haven't made the big change. Mayor, I'd like to I'd like to take this little time to ask some of the people that are on the citizens advisory committee if they have any comments they'd like to make concerning the discussions that's going on here tonight. One I thought of, and I think maybe it's been answered. Is these state inmates, can we afford the bill for them? Is that been figured? Do uh, we get enough of them to afford yeah. the bill for those 60 or so state inmates? Or do we have to take them? I guess, Jim, the, and, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, okay, is when, when we'll never get down to zero because at the end of every criminal court session, once they're sentenced, they become state inmates. And then, then we've got to wait on a bed to be available. And there's not always beds available. Now, do we need 60? I mean, Teresa and them ask for beds all the time. The last time I recall, you got three? Yeah, I got three other beds. So it just depends on what's available at the state system. Well, we had one just to take back that we had got from down at the pen. And they told us we couldn't bring it back if the, they didn't have a bed for it. We're contracted for 16. Yes. If we have a con do we even have a contract? Do we have a contract? We don't have a contract. I currently so answered it. If we don't have a contract, we're not supposed to be held. We're got just keep, we're just keeping the ones uh, that we're mandated to keep until they have a space for it. Right. Isn't that right? Okay. Right. We're, we're, we're not, not we're not asking for it. But, but, but the thing is, we can't take them. We're going to take them. There's no best nowhere for them. Every, every time, that's that problem. Well, 
kind of a little state problem. If they're sentenced here in Hamlin County, it's my understanding we're responsible for them until you get a bed for them, is that right? They're sentenced here, and you, you, if you can't find a bed for them, then your other option is what, to let them go? And they, a lot of the state inmates are sentenced even more that the, the Yates office and the judges are forbidden you from seeing them because you're giving them what they call a split confinement. And it's like to serve two or three or 65 days here, and then they are going to put them out. But they're, and the, the prisons will not take inmates with their paperwork or anything like that. And you're in the, the let me, I've asked this before and forgot, I'm sorry about that, but the, the women, the annex for the women, they're all together, right? I mean, they're separate from the men, or supposed to be, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. How many of those women are state inmates that you don't want, that, that, that are not fit to be in a cell with another woman? That, you know, they're, you know, like, they're mean. They're, they're, they're dangerous. How many state inmates it? Uh, as far as a, a big problem as state inmates, I would say women. Seven women. or eight women, probably. Seven or eight? Yeah. Okay. But they are, are, are they all in a big room or you've got them seven? I, I've never seen Well, we got them. 20 beds and 24 beds and then a 16 <coughs> cell bed and an 8 cell bed. Okay. No lockdown whatsoever. All right, is there anyone else on one of the committees that want? Hi, well, Sarah's sitting here writing, so I have three questions. Um, I've heard you talk about classifications, and you wanted to know how many are in, would be classified max and medium, and how many of our women would be need max security. Do you do classifications for the women? The best we can. So if we were asking today exactly how many are matched, we probably couldn't tell us. She just does. Now, the ones we've done that she would, is. would look at in minimum is matched, mixed in with them because they may know we they can live with you. That's what you meant. Well, and I guess I'm just thinking, uh, the only, I mean, I know the assessments that I do, but I also know Department of Corrections do strong arms. At least we got a low medium or high risk. Is that something we want to do? Because those are like, we're talking an hour on checking. You've got a strong arm. As far as women, they is very good. <coughs> uh, men, we try, we do the best on classified pale of men or seen whatever the charges are. So I guess that's my question number two. We don't have the available people to do that. So when we're talking about building this jail, it's more than what's it going to cost us to put a building in a spot. So I know from what we heard today, it's going to cost between a half a million and three-fourths million to put 75 parking spots back there. So how much is the jail going to cost? And then how much is the staff going to cost? Because if we're going to go to state-of-the-art, we got to go to state of the art. And so you kind of need that all those figures to really go forward, I would think, as commissioners mm -hmm. and say, we're going to allot this much money and it needs to cover parking jail and staff to bring this up. Because at some point, I would think the community's going to say, how much are you going to put there and how many times are you going to raise taxes? Amen. That's going to be a question. But for me, if I kind of had an idea of what the real picture looked like as far as cost, then you could say, I don't really have a problem with the hail property because we need parking and it's closest to where we're building. But when you're piecemealing, it starts The purpose to of the hail property is not for parking. That's the secondary reason. The purpose of the hell property is to get this building where we can be using it 30 or 40 years from now. That's the reason to do you that. Four house. Yes, ma'am. And they won't sell it separate. We're going to move about 2,400 square feet out of this building. And in my mind, the prime piece of this building is where the 
they teach you how to grow green beans or what's that called? Ag something. That, that leaves. That's going to boil you there. The veteran service officer, which is going to make it at the end of the day, a veteran, they'll have their own ingress, egress, parking there. Where, I mean, where they don't have to park over there and walk over here. But that has nothing to do necessarily with jail. We're gaining some parking doing it, but that's not the purpose. We can do the jail and not do this at all. We just think that I personally think the opportunity to buy it, because if somebody else buys that, we'll never we'll never be able to use it. Then we've really got we really got a problem. So let's say we are not talking about the health property or the jail. It's then nothing to do with the jail. Then where's the jail parking and why are we discussing it in the jail advisory? Mm -hmm. yeah. We just part of it. we're doing this as a whole. Would they be it's able to park it. there? Are we supposed to park them? Yeah, let's go to Nashville. Okay, they have a new jail, or they're in the process of building a new jail. I promise you, they're not furnishing parking. You know, their existing downtown jail, there is no parking. You know, uh, Knoxville's jail, because it's out where it is, but go to the city county to where the courtrooms are. There is no parking to speak to. If you're on your own, you find your parking. We're providing that. This, and, but there again, we can take that out. That's simple to do. Let's do it not different way. We're just saying that that takes in a piece of it. I think we can come up with 200, counting this, counting, we'll have, if we lose 20 spots at that new spot, you, we'll pick up 60. So we got a net of 40. We're going to have 140 spots over there, plus we can, have, we can probably add another 40, maybe 60. So that's, if you look at, they'll find it. So how many of the 75 spots? Got nothing to do with the jail. Let's forget about the hell property, okay? It has nothing to do with the jail. Take that off the table, you guys. No, we're not taking it off the table. But it's, <laughs> for it's the just, jail. For the jail. It has okay. nothing to do with the jail. If you look at uh, Esco Way, that, it, that won't be there. That is not a road, by the way. It, it, if you look on any map, it doesn't show up as a road. Okay. Allison Street, if you see where the building is in almost the top left corner, can you point to that build of uh, standbys? Okay, we own the lot next door to it. Right there. We own the lot up there in the top left corner. We're going to look at extending that parking lot there. We can come in this entrance that way. We can put parking here. The best parking on the jail, in my opinion, is right down here, kind of where Annex 2 is. And right now we, we store bobcats and stolen stuff there. I think that in my mind, we ought to beat that all the way up to County Garage. I mean, we, we've got junk, <laughs> and I, I don't think we should be there. But, it, and then we've got around this new building, it won't, that's, it's not going to take up a block. Let's say there's, what you say, 75,000 square feet, John? About 1.8 acres would be uh, close to that. The, 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 what we just got been, uh, the, 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 the big square. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, let's just say that it, that is not to scale by any means. It would be less than half of that. So we probably, I was thinking all along, we'll pick up 50 to 60. 327 to 329, it's 107,000 square feet. 107,000 square Okay, it's two and a half feet. Or two and a half acres. <laughs> And then we'll lose some parking right where it says Annex 1 because we'll have the, the, the uh, side port there and the connector. But, you know, with that, we'll end up with probably 100, 200 plus spots there now. And then if there's any overflow, we've got spots there and then on this corner. But we're talking about this more so for this building. <coughs> I'd love to get the parking off the street right there. I think it's dangerous as a cop gun. Well, and then that would be great to understand from the jail advisory state or this whole study, take the health property off. So let's go back to figuring out how much the cost is for the jail. Yeah. And the staffing that's needed for the jail. And my other thing was my only other thing was a comment, that was about the reentry program, which was option two versus option three. 
Austin we Tree has re entry too. I'm sorry, Debbie Bill. As well. Yeah. Um, I thought you told me option three didn't have one. As, as when? Oh, but it, right. But that's all it has. You were looking at option two at a male re entry. Yes. Yes. Well, so the combination of any one of those would. Yeah, so if we looked at uh, a re-entry, I was just going to say that we've talked about our drug epidemic and that we're going, everybody in the state of Tennessee is trying to come up with some type of innovative way for us to uh, re uh, a re-entry program. So you know, clearly we need to look at how can we do that. That's true. That's it. Well, according to a lot of these things I'm getting in the mail, they've got that figured out. If elected. <laughs> I can't wait. <laughs> we won't have any problems, Carrie. No drug problems. All right. Bill, are you wanting to ask for any type of action to be taken this evening? It's up. I'm leaving it in your all's hands. I, I think we ought to just hold off and just let everybody go over this. Get the figures. And get the figures. Authorize the, uh, let the bid go on tearing down the existing properties in that square. I think it's four houses. Okay. In front of the jail, Rick, you know exactly where I'm talking Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Okay, and then I, and also do topography and you know, the survey on that property. We own it, let's start using it. Okay. Is there a second for that motion? I'll second that motion. All right, in discussion. Tim, in discussion. I, I, I just think we're putting the park in front of the horse. We do all that stuff. Mm -hmm. We don't have a plan. You can use that though, if anything. Pardon? That's true. Repeat the full motion. Yeah, I'll sit and step up. Repeat the motion. That we that we do on, on this screen right here, dot three and four, bullet three and four, not one, not two, but three and four. Let's let's get those buildings torn down, or at least get the bid out, prepare to get them torn down. It's going to make it look a lot better, and. Let's get the topo boundary survey done. That would be my motion, not to exceed see fifty thousand dollars. Not to exceed what? Fifty thousand dollars. That's what you've got in there. Yes. Yeah. Between those two. On a bid, on a bid, we have to bid that. <coughs> we have a motion and we have a second. Is there any further discussion? Rick? Second. Oh, we got a second. We got a second. We got a second. Sorry, sorry. sorry. We have a second. Is there any further discussion? If not, send it to call the roll call. Randy DeBoer? Yes. Thomas Doty? Yes. Rick Eldridge? Yes. Tim Goins? No. Herbert Hartle? <coughs> yes. Joe Jarvis? Yes. Howard Chipley? Yes. Taylor Ward? Seven yes, one no, motion passes. Motion carries. All right. Is that the only action that we want to take this evening? It gets you in the right position. Get going. That gets us started. Yeah. Okay. That'll be fine. Okay. All right. Is there anything? Is there anything else? If not, this meeting is adjourned. Thank you. Is that Tim?